of the next level of the divine human. And that's Elizabeth's mission, and she's on it full on with all that she's got. That's why she came here. And we love her so much. So here she is, Elizabeth April. Hello. I'm not even pregnant anymore, but I'm so hot. I think it's like the energy in the room, right? Um, wow. Okay, I, I'm going to be really honest and say that about two days ago, I had a little mini breakdown, texted a friend, and said, I don't think anyone's coming to my workshop. <laughs> And she's like, why do you think that? And I'm like, I don't, am I good enough? Like, do I even have anything to offer? And, and she was just so amazing with kind words of advice and kind of just talking me off a cliff. But I'm going to swear because you guys know I swear. So I'm just, I'm not even going to hold back. But holy fuck 2024. Yeah. No, seriously. It's like unlike anything I have felt or experienced before. And I've experienced a lot. Um... But it's been kicking my ass, and I was actually just talking with our lovely volunteer today, and, and she was saying, you know what, it's, it's those down moments that allow us to appreciate the highs. She's like, look at that, because everyone's streaming in, and she's like, wow, a lot of people, she actually doesn't know who I am, so hi, Tanya. Um, <laughs> welcome to the festivities. Um, and so I was like, wow, I can't believe so many people are here, and and two days ago, I really thought, like, you know, it's going to be two, maybe three people. <laughs> and, uh, and so she said, you know, it's, it's those moments that make this so incredible, right? Where we show up without expectation, with open hearts, and uh, just, just ready to be present. So I'm hoping that your day has been incredible. Um, this place is incredible. And I'm hoping that today you're, you're really showing up with just an open heart because I want to share a gift with you tonight. And um, there's going to be many gifts. You know, I was on a Starseed panel earlier and there was such, I mean, it was next level. It was, it was incredible. And, uh, and there was a couple of ladies who were channeling light language, which is so powerful. And I think in so many ways, light language is not accepted. It's not really known. Um, in the mainstream, and when when we get to that point where it is, I mean, watch out, because those are light codes through verbal vibration. And, uh, and so being on that panel was just so incredible, and when they said, hey, like, do you want to share an activation with everyone? You know, I'm like, oh, man, like, I don't channel light language. Like, I don't, there's nothing I can say, boom, you're activated. Like, that's not what I do. What I do is I activate through knowledge and information, right? And by giving that knowledge and information, I give you the power, I give you the tools to activate yourself, right? This has nothing to do with me. It's just a conduit. And that being said, I wanted to start, um, so I'm going to do a bit of a lecture first, and then we're going to get into some live channeling. So there's going to be a couple people that I select. I've got a couple giveaways, actually. I don't know why, but, you know, my higher self is like, give it away. And I'm like, I could be Oprah for a moment. You get a book and you get it. No, uh, but it's fun. And I do have a couple things to give away. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to bring some people up on the stage. Uh, so I'm going to try and get through the lecture part because I really just want to be present with the people, right? Like that. And so specifically, if you've, if you've seen my coaching calls, specifically my intention when bringing the individuals up is going to be What's your soul mission? Okay, and we're going to talk a little bit about um, m more about my intention behind that. So before we even get there, I just I always have to start with gratitude. Um, so first and foremost, I have so much gratitude for the individuals who actually put on this event. Right? Um, I actually don't know the guy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know the guy who's like in charge, in charge. I've met him, but I actually forget his name. I'm so bad with names. Robert, Robert? okay, great. Thank you, Robert. Um, but you know, Christine, she, I don't think she's here, but she is the woman behind it all. And uh, last year when I won the book award, I got up to do my like thank you speech and I said, 
yo, you need to give Christine a raise. And I haven't checked in with her this year, but I hope she got a raise, okay? Because that woman is fire, and we need those kind of people running these events with that fire energy. So huge shout out to Robert, huge shout out to Christine, and also a huge shout out to all the volunteers. Um, you know, these sort of events seriously would not take place without the volunteers, so. And of course, the biggest, most heartfelt moment of gratitude for each and every one of you. I mean, I've met people today from all over the world, including a couple who flew 14 hours to get here from Australia. And when I signed their book, I said, good day, mate. <laughs> I hope they got the job. So I know you guys are here, so sorry about that. Uh, I was gonna almost put, put some shrimp on the bobby, but you know, I didn't wanna be like too hokey. So, but it's incredible. It's so amazing to see people from all over the world coming out and, and I know that it can be a pricey event, you know? It's LA, I mean, the food prices here. Can we petition against that? This is, that's unfair, okay? $15 for a bottle of water, wrong, wrong. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so gratitude. Let's just... <laughs> so back to that. Um, thank you guys for making the effort, for driving, for flying, for being here, for paying the money, for showing up, because you're not just showing up for this moment right now and what you're about to receive. Ooh, getting chills. You're showing up for the community. You're showing up for yourself. You're showing up for the collective. We are the way showers. We're still considered weird and fucking rock that weirdness, right? Rock it, rock it. All right, let's go. Let's get into it. Uh, it's funny because I'm usually wearing my Fitbit and I put on a now watch all it says is now. So I love when people ask me the time. They're like, oh, you gotta watch, what, what time is it? Hmm, now, yeah. <laughs> so this whole weekend I've been like, oh my God, where, where am I supposed to be? I mean, I was late for this. Where am I supposed to be? Oh, fuck, it's now. <laughs> again, again, it's now. Um, which is such a great reminder. It, it really is. <sighs> all right, I got my notes. I'm wondering, I, I don't think I can close this laptop, so I won't. Um, I want to talk about, the first thing I want to talk about before we get into your mission and all of the steps and stages and things and all the things that we need to access before we actually harness that soul mission, um, I want to talk about the first conference that I ever did. So I just had a really awesome astrology reading with a friend of mine and she said, your Pluto is conjunct or something's aligned and something's crossing over, but apparently it's significant. And she said, you know, 12 years ago, you know, is a representation of what's about to happen, right? So she's like, what happened 12 years ago? And I'm like, wow, 12 years ago, okay. Like, I did my first ever conference 12 years ago. And I wanna tell you a little brief story about this and I wanna, then I wanna tell you why I'm telling you the story behind this. So 12 years ago, I was, um, what, 19, uh, 18, something like that, maybe 1920. And um, I was, um, I had booths, okay, I had a booth at a conference just like this. And I did a little bit of everything. Sometimes I would read people's um, like chakras. Sometimes I would do chakra drawings for people, but whatever, you know, I was just like kind of doing my thing. I wasn't a speaker, just a, had a booth. And this woman comes over to me and she's like, hey, can you draw my aura? And I said, yeah, for sure. And then I would explain it. And she's like, wow, this is incredible. Like what got you into this? And I said, wow, you know, I just got abducted by aliens like not too long ago. And like shit's kind of been weird since then. So, I'm kind of just here and I don't know why and I'm just kind of processing it all. And she's like, hmm, that's so funny that you say that because I run Alien Con Toronto. I'm like, you run, you run the Alien Conference in Toronto? She's like, yeah, I don't know why, but I feel like you need to be there. I feel like you need to speak on stage. I'm like, what? I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't even on like YouTube or the internet. I was off all social media because like I was super suspect that I was going to get followed and shit. Um, <laughs> right? Blessing and a curse. So, so I, I went to this conference and the night before, so I had like an 8 a.m. lecture 
And I took about like, you know, two months to memorize every word of the lecture. And uh, the night before, and I had all these like business cards and posters and flyers and things and whatever made up. And so the night before, my website got shut down. So I called up my friend who was like a computer nerd and I'm like, yo, Andy, like, can you figure out my website? Like, I'm speaking for the first time ever tomorrow and I need this website going. And so he's like, okay, I'll check it out. Two hours later, he calls me up and he's like, yo, Liz, like, this is weird, but someone hacked your website. I'm like, okay. And he's like, but there's something that I've never seen before. And he said, in and amongst all of the code, we're talking like numbers and letters and dashes and dots and all the things, right, of the virus, he said, there are words. There are English words in this code. He's like, I've never seen that before. I said, what? Okay. Well, what are the words? Three words. He took a picture of it. Silence is golden. He said, this virus is so intelligent that it's made 50 copies of itself as we've just been talking. He's like, dude, I don't. He's like, he's like, what are you doing tomorrow? I'm like, I, speaking at this alien conference, I don't know. And so he figured it out, he got her back up, great. So during my lecture, the first thing that I said was this thing about the, the website being hacked. And I'm like, I've never been on stage, but like my website got hacked and whatever, and silence is golden. But I will not stay silent. And it's funny because I got like a standing ovation right at the beginning. Uh, I'm like, wow, this is going pretty good. I'm like a minute into this. Um, and so after, after I got off stage, there was this guy, like, you know, a bunch of people want to come talk to you. So there's a guy come over. And as he comes over, and there's a group of people. And he's like doing all this weird, like, uh, like contorting stuff. And I'm like, oh, OK. There's some stuff going on with that guy. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and I told him, I said, hey, like, look, I'm going to talk to you, but give, maybe have a seat. Like, have a seat, and I'll come back over. And he's like, OK. So I come back over, and I sit down, and I you know, talk to all the people. And I'm like, hey, man, like, what's up? He's like, Phew. he was like out of breath. And he said, I am so sorry, but I'm a trans channeler. I didn't know what that meant. He's like, what that, what that means is that there's beings that come through me and they use my body for messages. I said, OK. And he said, I have a message for you. He said, I know who hacked your website. I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, it was the NSA. And I'm a Canadian girl. What the fuck is an NSA? <laughs> I had to Google it after, right? I'm like, the NSA, the National Secure. What is this? And, uh, you know, being here on stage 12 years later, I'm reflecting on that moment. And the point of the story is this. You can be here too, OK? I hear it all the time. Wow, EA, you're so good on camera, or you're so polished, or you're so quick with your channeling. And I tell people, are you kidding? It didn't start that way. Do you know how many videos I had to film? 50 videos. Half of them didn't have audio. The lighting was all shadowed. My hair was a mess, but still is today. And people don't realize that everyone gets started somewhere. It took me 12 years to be up on stage, not memorizing anything, being this comfortable with all of you. And it started with having a booth. No matter if you're a volunteer, no matter if you're, uh, you're, you have a booth here, no matter if you have no idea what the fuck you're doing here, <laughs> OK? I'm saying that you're already getting started because you are here, all right? And that's the whole point of my messages, is that I am not different or special or elevated at all, OK? The amount of ego deaths I've had in the past month will teach me that over and over and over again. It will humble you every single time and remind you that we are all just human. But I believe that being human is one of the most divine beings we can be. And it's time to harness that and dig deep and access what has been blocked. It starts now. You're already there. All you have to do is catch up 
to where you've already landed. Everyone starts somewhere. You all have a gift. I cannot stress that enough. Your gift, whatever that may be, hopefully we figure some of that out tonight, is needed, okay? I hear it all the time. You know, oh, you know, I'm a medium, but like, there's so many mediums. <laughs> there's not another one of you, though. Oh, I want to be a life coach, but there's so many. Uh, excuse me? There are eight billion people in the world. There's a couple hundred thousand of us, maybe a couple million, who are on the journey. But at the point in time where the energy shifts, we need all of you. This year is the year of action. We're no longer playing around, guys, okay? If you do not learn your lesson, you're going to get kicked in the ass immediately, okay? Period. So it's time to harness that. It's time to take action. It's time to fucking believe in yourself. I don't care if you're 16, you're 65, or you're 92. Age, race, language, none of that matters. We all have a soul. We all have divine gifts to give. We're all psychic. We're all tapped in. Remember, your energy body is your natural state of being. Your physical reality, your physical body is what we have to deal with, with love, with love, okay? So I'm just reflecting and I just want to say it's, it's been such an incredible journey to get here. And I feel like for me, things are about to take a different direction in a really beautiful way. And I'm so ready to activate and awaken the sleeper star seeds. It's great to be here with all of you, but I think you've already got it all. And, and I truly believe that. I'm not here to talk to star seeds. I'm here to talk to the ones who have no idea what a, what was that again? Star, uh, seed, planting uh, stars, the galaxy seed, uh, star seed. Those are the ones that I'm here to usher into this new age. And they're incredible too. And they're garbage truck drivers, they're accountants, they're lawyers, they're social media influencers, you know? <laughs> it's all across the board. But, but that's who I'm here for. It's funny, because that light kept going on and off too in my, uh, my panel, um, which I think it was in a different room. Okay. <laughs> Hi, little buddy, what's going on? Who's broken over there? <laughs> okay, so my intention today is to activate your mission, to validate your experience, and to give you the tools to move forward. Straightforward, right? All right, so let's talk about the reason we incarnate. I'm talking about all incarnation. Plants, trees, aliens, interdimensionals, humans, a bug. There are only two reasons that a soul chooses to leave source and chooses to incarnate anywhere in the universe. One, to learn lessons, and two, to clear karma. That's it. That's really it. That's what it comes down to. So karma right now is clearing out the old energy. That's all that it is. It's cause and effect. And like I said, if we're not listening, especially in 2024, things are picking up. Things are getting faster. The things that used to take years to come back around are coming back around immediately, instantaneously. So learn that lesson, okay? Clear that old garbage. We are not taking it into a higher frequency. That's why 2024 has been so challenging is because we're getting hit with all the shit we did not want to deal with. And then learning lessons. It's something brand new. It's a new language. It's a new way of being. You've never done that before. And that's what makes us move forward. 
Another way to, to say learning lessons is experience, right? I mean, when I learned the great truth of existence in the universe from Source, and Source told me, you're here to learn. What? Learn what? What, what am I here to learn? All of it. <laughs> really? 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 That's it? And what, what's needed to learn something? What's needed to experience something? Not knowing. Woo! Isn't that fun? What is required to manage and navigate not knowing? <gasps> Vulnerability. Yeah, that's fun too, right? Trust me, I know. I broke down a couple times this past week. And I had to learn that. I had to learn that not knowing was just as important as knowing. And for someone who has a whole lifetime dedicated to knowing, it's a tough lesson to learn. We need to be okay in the unknown. It's as simple as that. And within that unknown comes challenge. And the best way to navigate challenge is to have no attachments, no expectations. So that's it. What's the point of incarnating in this entire universe? To clear the old shit and to learn some new shit. You can quote me on that, by the way. You can quote me on that. That's an EA original? All right. I just had to go over that. Um, so let's talk about being a student versus being a teacher, OK? Because my greatest thing is I'm not here for the students. I'm here for the teachers. I set an intention quite a few years ago that I, I didn't want to work with students. I didn't want to work with people who didn't see their light even a tiny bit. Because ultimately, we're all students and we're all teachers. And so I know that each and every one of you right here today are teachers. I know that for a fact. Every single person who watches my video, okay, or in my community is a teacher. I know that for a fact. I know that because I'm not just a, hate to say it, you know, basic bitch, right? Like, um, let's meditate together and open our third eye. And that's great. And there are people who need to be in that position. And there are people who need to watch those people. But we're going quantum physics. We're going conspiracies. We're going the 12th dimension. We're going aliens. We're going third eye. We're going plant medicine. We're going to all of it. And I know that you wouldn't be here or even found my content or understand who I am or what I'm trying to do if you did not have all of those seeds already planted. That's why I know 111% fact that you are all teachers. Because this is nothing new to you. I am here to remind you of what you already know. And that's why it's not discovering your mission. Remember this. It's reminding yourself of why you're here. So I have a little quiz. It's a pop quiz. Hopefully you studied. No? OK. So you can either get out your notebooks, but it's not a big deal. Just think about it in your mind. I want you to give yourself a point for each, each point, each point that I, I mention here, OK? So this is supposed to tell you if you are more on the student side or more on the teacher side, OK? So let's start with student. It's, I've only got three points to go over. Give yourself a point if you tend to seek advice from others often. Mentally, give yourself a point if you have a tendency to seek advice from others often. Number two, give yourself a point if you feel like you are stuck in repetition often, and I'm not just talking about, oh, it's the same old thing this week. I'm talking about, 
holy shit, another relationship, that same guy that I dated 15 years ago, coming back around again. Like we're talking a lifetime of just repeated patterns, okay? Once again, give yourself a point if you feel stuck in repetition often. Third thing, give yourself a point if you feel like you get sucked into things for long periods of time. So if you're like, yeah, I tried kundalini and like, then I like did that for 10 years. It's a good example, okay? It's fine, no judgment, okay? So tally up your points. Now we're gonna go over to the teacher side, teacher side, all right? Give yourself a point if you feel that others seek your advice often. Give yourself a point mentally. If you are that rock, you are that friend, you are that person in your family, and we're like, shit's at the fan again, George, like, what do I do? Um, give yourself a point if others seek your advice often. Second thing, give yourself a point if you feel you move quickly through lessons. There's no avoiding them, there's no avoiding challenge, but do you move quickly through them or do they repeat, okay? Give yourself a point as a teacher if you move quickly through lessons often, all right? Last one, give yourself a point if you love trying a lot of new things, but then you move on really quickly. All right, you got your points? Do the math, count on your fingers because that's how I do it. All right, you ready? Who here has more points as a student? Okay, okay, all right, don't, don't be shy, don't be shy, no judgment. Looking at you guys, thank you for being vulnerable. All right, raise of hands, who here has more points being a teacher? Can, you, can we just, come on, come on, look around the room, come on, fucking own it, guys, come on. Yes, yes. All right. And even if you think that you're a student, I'm looking at you guys back there. And you right up here, okay? I was just looking at you, okay? Thank you for being vulnerable. Um, you wouldn't be here if you're just a student. You wouldn't, you really wouldn't. Just like I mentioned, there's that light again. It's important that we recognize ourselves and who we are, okay? So, you cannot be a teacher and give unless you have something to give. And I'm not talking about information, I'm not talking about healing, I'm not talking about a higher vibration, I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about energy. If you're giving and giving and giving and giving and you've got nothing left at the end of the day, how can you step into that role? So let's talk about the foundations that are needed in order to step into yourself as a teacher to do the mission work. So ask yourself, how can I receive? Is it an Epsom salt bath? Is it a journal entry? Is it, uh, is it a therapy session? Is it drinks with the ladies? That's fine, right? Ask yourself, how can I receive? Because as a teacher, it's a perpetual, <laughs> lesson to balance giving and receiving. There's that light again. So let's understand your life lesson. Life lesson. Then we're going to talk about mission. Life lesson. The number one thing that I channel from someone's soul blueprint and soul contracts is what they signed up here to learn. Okay? Life lesson. So a life lesson is something that we've contracted ourselves to learn through challenge over and over and over again. So repeat, 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 repeated cycles. The number one thing that you've repeated in your life is typically the lesson that you are here to learn. Why is this important? It's important because the number one thing that we're here to learn is the number one thing that we're here to give. So I want you to think about it. This is really important because if you don't take the time right now in this moment, when are, you, when are you going to, okay? So let's close our eyes. I want you to think about 
the most painful moment in your life without, without reaction, as long as you, you feel like you can go there and observe it objectively, okay? Not trying to open up trauma wounds. Think about pain, a painful moment, something that you went through, something that you didn't really know how to handle, something that you may still ruminate on today. Now think about another moment in your life that reflects that same energy. And maybe another moment in your life that reflects that same energy. What is being repeated? Now open your eyes. It's important to narrow down the lesson. So back in the day when I first started, I would get sick all the time. I started taking on clients, but I also had friends who were in a lot of need. So I was constantly communicating, constantly giving, constantly giving, and I would constantly get sick. One winter I had like five different experiences of strep throat. I'm like, take my tonsils out, just do it. That's because I was over communicating, under receiving. And so that's a great example of a challenge that I had, and it's been repeated over and over and over again. And when you take a look at the challenge, you have to ask yourself, what's the lesson behind the challenge? For me, it was balance, right? Not only is balance something that I have struggled to learn every single point of my life, but it's also something that I'm so fucking good at teaching, right? A lot of people say, you're just so real, you're so human, you're so grounded. Yeah, because I had to go through a lot of stuff to get there. Balance is my greatest lesson. It's my greatest challenge. Anytime I'm out of alignment, balance is thrown out of alignment. I feel it. I sense it. I experience it. And yet, balance is the number one thing that I get to teach every other starseed. How to balance mission versus matrix. How to balance being an alien and a human. How to pay the fucking bills and also help the world, right? We got to do it. So I want you to really think about those challenges in your life and ask yourself, what's the lesson? Because I'm telling you right now that there is a hidden diamond within all of those repeated challenges. And that diamond is the seed of your mission work. So I had a client a couple years ago he said, you know, I've gone through a lot of addiction, you know, a lot of depression, um, abuse of childhood, I was in and out of foster homes, and then I got into drugs, and like that just felt good because nothing else did. And he said, you keep telling me that I'm here to do something, but I just, how, could, how can anyone hire me with that kind of history? How can I help someone else when I've just had such a dark past? Do you see where I'm going with this? That darkness is the key. That challenge, those repeated cycles, that's your resume, okay? Now I do want to mention when talking about star seeds and mission work, it's not about being a spiritual teacher. Right? Because I think immediately it's like, oh, I've learned so much and I can teach that. And I do believe that literally, yes, we can all teach something. But we also do need the garbage truck drivers and the grocery baggers and we need the accountants and we need the lawyers and we need, we need the people integrated within everyday society. Right? You can still have your matrix job and do your mission work. You don't have to leave your 3D job, go out on a limb and try and make it work. You don't have to feel that kind of pressure. As a matter of fact, if you were to do that, you're putting yourself into survival and that survival isn't going to allow you to thrive within your mission work. Okay? So I don't really recommend it. You could do it. What I'm trying to say is we have to learn what it is that we, what, what, our, what our biggest lesson is here. We have to learn that in order to move forward. And within that, we have the tools and the pieces in understanding our soul, our contracts, and the very purpose for existing here on planet Earth. So let's talk about understanding your mission. 
Now, if you've read my book, you should know, you should know the main missions that I've channeled, okay? You better have read my book. <laughs> Stacy, is that you? Did you give me a four-star review on Amazon? I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> but don't. But seriously, five stars only. Um, so I'm not going to go into depth on what each of these missions are. If you really want to know, just read the book again, chapter 17, okay? Or just skip ahead or ask a friend or something. Um, but I want to go over the missions because most of you will fit into one of these missions, okay? Um, and then we're going to talk about taking action. And then we're going to bring some star seeds up here. So, <sighs> missions are not linear, they're quantum, which means that you're not only going to have one, you're probably going to have many. Um, so there's the pillar. The pillar is usually, like, you kind of think of that like a, a strong masculine energy. The pillar is usually someone who's not necessarily, like, spiritually advanced, but they're here to hold space. They're awesome space holders, okay? So is the dog okay? Everything okay? Aww. It just breaks your heart when you hear that. It really does. It really does. Um, I want to actually mention something about this because this happened at the Starseed panel quite often. So there was like phones going off during like light language activations and stuff. And I wanted to mention it at the panel and, you know, this, this, this dog in pain, right? But these things actually snap us out of one state and it brings us into another. So it's not about pain into pleasure or anything like that. It's just about these moments that actually take us out of almost like a trance that we can be in. Uh, so, uh, sorry, Papo, but also thank you for the lesson, right? Like, thank you for bringing that into our awareness. So the pillar. Um, and then we've got the satellite. So I consider myself a satellite. Essentially, it's someone who uh, receives and sends information. You may probably not be aware of what you're sending and receiving, but it's someone who's usually, they know things without knowing why they know them. All right? Um, and then the healer. Pretty straightforward, someone who's dedicated to healing. A lot of doctors, nurses, um, you know, hospice workers are all natural healers, and they're just drawn to that uh, matrix work because they are a healer. Uh, we've got the rebel, love the rebel, you know, someone who will always say no, someone who will always stand up. Like, I, I don't want to be that person in this lifetime. That's why I kind of stay away from, like, politics and things like that. But, like, I commend those who will. Like, I commend those who will, you know, protest on the street and fight for our rights because we need them, especially at this time. Um, the grid worker, someone who, you know, goes to various locations, even just shows up there and doesn't know why, but they're doing that work. You don't even have to know what you're doing, but you're doing the work. Um, and then we've got, what else? I feel like I'm missing one. But what was so interesting is, when I was writing these down, uh, the other mission that came in, and this is so funny, I'm like, man, I gotta like republish my book and add this in there because it's so important. The other mission that I didn't even realize existed is the human. Seriously, just called the human mission. So what happens is when you're a starseed soul and you've gone through all these incarnations and you've been on planet Earth a lot um, and you've learned a lot from planet Earth and you're like, I'm just here for the ride. I'm going to get out my popcorn. I'm just going to enjoy the show. Right? So you're probably aware of things and you resonate with all the little missions, but you're like not called to do just one thing. And you're like, you know what? Life's been good to me. I'm just here to chill. Or life's been really shitty to me and I'm here to just clear that old energy. So the human is usually someone who has been in their mission in lifetime after lifetime after lifetime and they're at a point now where they just need to learn how to be a human. You know? And that's kind of the toughest mission. It's like when I'm a rebel, watch out. I'm a rebel and I know exactly what I'm here to do and I'm going to do it. When you need to be a human as a mission, you're like... Oh, I'm feeling so many things. And how do I even deal with everything I'm feeling? Right? And, and you're just, you're in it. You're so grounded in it. And it's so tough as a starseed to be in it and to not really have a mission and to not know. And I want to let you guys know that if you're really fucking confused, that's okay. You may just be here to be a human. And that is such a commendable mission. You want to know why? 
because you've done the work. You've already shown up. I call it cosmic retirement. Stop worrying about it, okay? Now, now <laughs> you're welcome. Take the, take a load off, really, right? Just here to experience being human. What does that mean? Eat good food, drink awesome wine, travel to great places, meet interesting people. Just do it. Just do the human thing. Enjoy life. Stop getting so confused into what am I here to do? Now, I want to mention something else. If you don't currently know what you're here to do, it'll come. And sometimes the information that comes is, I'm here to just enjoy. I'm in cosmic retirement. And that's beautiful too. OK? The divine spark will make its way into your life. It will. It'll come at the right time. You'll meet the right people to get you to the right places. So a big part of it is timing. And that leads me to my last point, taking action versus timing. I know that I've been saying, really leading up to 2024, action, action, action. It's go time. Let's go, Star Seeds. Woo, let's go, team. Awesome. Fantastic. But if you don't feel divinely called into action, don't worry about it. Don't stress over it. The timing isn't aligned. Be present. Set your intentions. Let go of all expectations. It will happen when it needs to. The way I live my life these days is only with a fuck yes. I had an interview earlier with a vice guy, and I told him that. I'm like, dude, I mean, I only live with a fuck yes. He's like, what, <sighs> what does that mean? Because he was trying to understand the whole star seed. He was like, galactic <laughs> seed. And then he's like, fuck yes, is this, what, and what am I missing here? I'm like, no, seriously, like, it's either, if it's not a fuck yes, and it's a no. And that's it. He's like, well, what, how do you, what do you mean by that? And I said, if it's easy, it's meant to be. If it's not, don't worry about it. Stop wasting your time and energy on things that aren't aligned. And the second you try and push through and you try and sign into that website that's giving you a 404 page four times over, you're wasting your time and energy. Pick it up the next day. So I'm talking big things, and I'm talking about signing into a website that's giving you a 404 page. Let it go. There's so much to be said about the right timing. There's so much to be said about patience. There's so much to be said about listening. Take action only when you are divinely inspired. Period. Only work with the fuck yes energy. Period. Got it? Good? Awesome. Fuck yes. Can we say it together? Can we? Hey, ah! Wait. One. I, I hope the other room hears us. Okay, ready? Like, who is over there with that profanity? You know what my dad said after my panel today? He's like, I'm so proud of you. You know, you really did a great job. But, you know, could you just, could you just watch the F-bombs? Really? Don't really? I mean, come on. Am I 12? Like, let's go. So let's use profanity together. <laughs> right? Let's just, you're, you've inspired me. You have inspired me today, Papa April, to really just use it together. Okay, ready? Are you ready? Ready? Fuck yes on one, two, three. One, two, three. Fuck yes! Yes, yes. Okay, all right, let's get some chairs up here. Tanya, I don't know, we, uh, yeah, we have some volunteer, thank you so much, Tanya. I got it, I've been working out, I'm strong. All right, and one more chair if possible, thank you so much, Tanya. Okay, and then we need names, the names, please. Meg, 
No, we're not doing hands, we're doing names. I don't think I can move that. No, I can't move that. Okay, great. Let's do the first person from here, and then we'll get everyone else. Okay, so uh, grab a piece of paper. Who, who here hasn't put their name in? <laughs> Holy guacamole. All right, so we have some paper, but if you have a friend beside you who has a notebook, please utilize them. Meet someone new. Um, and write down your first and last name, only if you want to be chosen, by the way. If you want to be a victim, please write your name down. First and last name. And then please pass your paper to the inside lane. Pass your paper to the inside lane. Okay, so Quiet, 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 quiet. I really want to make sure we get through as many as possible. So, as you are all quietly submitting your names, quietly submitting your name. All right. My intention. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. All right. My intention for this is to choose someone, someone who needs the validation that they truly are a creator and that they're here to give a gift to the world. And I know that that's all of you. And I truly know. Actually, I got into a bit of a debate with a guy on my forum on my website the other day. <laughs> And I don't usually often, but he basically said, hey, I feel like you really want to help people in these coaching calls, but you know that thing that you said the other day really threw me off, and now I believe that you're not here to help people. I said, oh, God, calling my whole mission into question. And so I said, well, what do you mean? What did I say? And he said that, that I said, which I did, that I, I set the intention to choose someone, okay, in, in these coaching calls, these live sessions, um, that needs the validation, but that they've already figured it out. And he said, there are so many of us who haven't figured it out. So for you to say that you're here to only give information to someone who's already got it all together, and I said, look, it is not my responsibility to do the work for you. I cannot give anything to anyone who is not ready to receive it. I am simply here to validate what you've already done for yourself. Trust me, if you've seen my recent coaching call, there was a woman, and I'm like, can we talk about romantic partners? And she's like, nope. <laughs> I'm like, you were chosen for a reason. And then I had my mods like texting me after, like, that woman, man, like, she was not ready. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know why she was chosen. She shut down what I needed to tell her, right? Once again, I cannot give anything to anyone. So if you are really lost and you're thinking after this, I wasn't chosen and I'm really lost and I really need it, you already have it. It is not up to me or any guru or any fucking YouTuber or any channeler, okay, to tell you who you are. That is up to you. You have that within you. You have the DNA. You have the divine spark. You have the predestined contracts. You have that. If I were to give it to you, I'm taking your power away from you. Okay, and with that, <laughs> with that little note, just want to make sure. Uh, 
I am recording. Look at that. Such a good influencer. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm just going to clear my energy. Also, like, sorry about the, like, butchering the names. Sharon Johnson, what an easy name. Sharon, come on up. Sharon Johnson, up to the stage. Come on, sit right there. Okay, so we're going to pass this mic back and forth. All right. Hmm. What do I want to ask you? Okay. Um, briefly, okay, because I do want to get through a couple people. Where are you at on your mission? I feel like I'm in a bit of a... Um, <clears throat> sorry? Okay. I feel I'm in a little bit of a lull and um, in a pause, cocoon state, and um, I'm not quite sure... I don't have the clarity to have a, you know, have an idea of where exactly the next step is. All right, so for those of you who didn't get it, Sharon's in a cocoon state, and I love that, that, that word, by the way. And you just don't have clarity to move forward. So let's tune in, okay? Let's see where you're at. Let's see what your guides have to say. Now, as always with these things, Sharon is a representation of all of you. Thank you in advance. Um, but seriously, right? Like we're all fractals of each other, but specifically I also choose people that are a mere reflection so that we can all learn, all right? So yes, thank you for your vulnerability. Let's tune in, one second. Um, Sherman, let me ask you, do you have kids? Yes. Yeah, okay. So how old are they? I have one who's 26. 26? 19. 19, yeah, okay. Okay, cool. So when I tune into your energy, this mama bear vibe comes in, okay? You, first of all, you're a great mom. Can I just say that? Yeah. And a really big part of your mission on planet Earth is to raise those kids. And what's happened is that you're now discovering who you are beyond the role of being a mom. And you're feeling a little lost. And I want to tell you something. You've already done it. It's not about searching for what the next thing is. Just like I mentioned moments ago, it's time for you to live your life. You are a dedicated soul, and you always have been, lifetime after lifetime. No matter what you choose to do and how you choose to help, you are dedicated in doing it. And that's what you've done here as a mom. You're looking for your next dedication. Your lesson is to understand that you don't have to have a dedication in order to help, in order to assist. Your lesson is to receive. What are you doing right now? Yes, you are. And I bet you feel damn uncomfortable. <laughs> It's really validating to hear that because it is, it's been a huge mission of mine to be the best mom, like to, to really be able to, um, you know, impart knowledge and, and, and caretaking to, to individuals who are going to go out in the, in the world and um, it just wasn't what I thought it was going to be at all. And um, so it's, it's, it's really comforting to hear that 
I did it, and it is what it is, and it's, it's beautiful. Thank you so much, Sharon. I love how the first person in channeling a mission is that she's completed it. I think that's a really big lesson that we can all learn here. It's about receiving, right? And not constant, how, how else can I give? I'm not doing enough. If you just stop that attitude and you start to ask, how can I receive more? A lot of challenges are going to clear up. Okay, let's move on, shall we? This is cursive. <sighs> Lewis Schmidt. Come on up, Lewis. Whoop, whoop. Hey. Hey, hi. Hi. Welcome to the hot seat. Yeah, I need my own show. The EA hot seat. What's up, Lewis? OK, tell me, so where are you at on your mission? Where, where, where? Um, I'm, a, I'm about to sell my business and take a whole new step in the direction I've been going. I've done a lot of grid work and things like that. I think I'm supposed to just be kind of receiving. Um, I keep telling myself, well, when you have more money, and then you'll have this little place to go to, and you'll be safe, and you won't have to worry about all this stuff. I'm kind of thinking like after the shift, I'll be this big teacher to help people, but I'm not sure. Have you sold your business yet? No. How long have you been trying to sell your business for? About a week. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, we are in the middle of a transition. Also, you need to talk to my dad because he's, he's been trying for years. All right. All right, Lewis. Let's take a look. Let's see what's going on. Okay. One second. Okay, great. So um, immediately I'm actually getting drawn back to a past lifetime where you were in Atlantis. I don't know if you've ever like thought of or had connections with Atlantis, but you were definitely there and you were actually a political figure, okay, in Atlantis. All right, so you're familiar. And um, hmm, you have a lot of guilt from Atlantis. You have a lot of guilt from Atlantis. And the reason why is because you were in the system and it was advancing really quickly and you did bring up some red flags that you saw, but no one did anything of it, about it. And then Atlantis fell. And you were kind of like the captain, like go down with the ship sort of mentality. So you went down with the Atlantis. And ever since then, you have been blaming yourself for part of Atlantis's fall and collapse because what came through is this, this sentiment, I didn't do enough. I didn't do enough to stop it. I didn't do enough to help. And so even though you've been in the matrix and you've been doing your work, you've been kind of an undercover awakener in a lot of ways. And you've always had this energy about this lifetime and pretty much every lifetime since Atlantis that, that is, once I have the resources, I will do enough. Once I have the resources, I can help. 
once I have the once I have the space and the time and the energy and the the abundance, I can right or wrong. I need to tell your soul right now that Atlantis was not your fault. Okay. That was going to happen no matter what. And you are one of the only ones who tried to stop it. You did do everything in your power. Let go of the blame that you hold. Now fast forward to this lifetime. You will only sell your business once you understand that you are not meant to, hmm, how do I say this? You're not meant to give back what you receive from the business because if you were to do that, you would do that out of a place of guilt from Atlantis. The real lesson here, which is interesting because it's similar to Sharon, is that you are just supposed to enjoy. Now, I do see you holding space. I do see you on a property. I, do, I actually see kind of like a health and wellness thing. I don't know. Um, I see you creating that sanctuary. And I see you helping people, but not to the extreme that you're thinking, okay? Because to that extreme is to make up for something that was never your fault to begin with. And with that, there is this fluidity that comes through every movement from this moment forward. There's no longer an attachment to the need to do something to help humanity shift. I need to remind you, Lewis, that humanity is shifting no matter what, and you are here to just watch it happen, not to take on the responsibility. That is your lesson, and that is your mission to just allow it to unfold and know that we got it. There are other people who are in that position. Just enjoy and give what you can and relax. Thank you for your service. Yeah. Who knew? Going to Atlantis. It's a journey. All right. Let's move on. Thank you. One more, and then we're going to do some giveaways. Oh, fi Ooh, 50. Thank you very much. All right. OK, this is going to be a really special individual. Hold on. Yeah, I feel it. Okay. Okay, I can't read your last name, sorry. Zach. Zach Rotis? Dude! Is it you? I just met this guy in the hallway. I snuck him into this event. He's like, yeah, so like, I heard, like, Elizabeth April's the one to see. And I'm like, dude, did you know that's me? I'm going there right now. Come. Come with me. Okay, hold on. Let me ask you. Have you ever seen a video of mine? No. You're not even subscribed? No. All right. I, I want to mention something before we get into Zach. Wow. What a case. I want to mention something, okay? I know that there's a lot of you in the audience who are thinking, this is going to be the last guy. This is the last person. You're special, by the way. Oh. You're scared, too. I love it. He's scared. He's scared. <laughs> All right. No, but for real, there's a lot of people in the audience who are thinking, I've been following you for eight years, five years. I've subscribed. I watch every fucking video. I'm a creator member. I didn't get chosen. <laughs> and this guy, okay, who the fuck is Zach? <laughs> who is this guy who just comes out of nowhere and gets chosen? Like, hey. 
<sighs> Please understand that he is a mere reflection of you. Please understand that everyone is chosen for a reason. Okay, so I don't know who Zach is yet. We're gonna find out. He doesn't know who I am, which is kind of cool. Um, oh, he's a sleeper starseed. He's a sleeper starseed. <laughs> oh my god. With a big crystal though, so maybe not so sleep. Um, all right. So, um, wow. Okay. So I just want to say, please just hold space and understand that everyone's chosen. And I do two coaching calls a month to, to, to offer this two hours every month, okay? Thank you for the clap. Sorry, I'm clap over there. All right, Zach, briefly, please. Yeah. Where are you on your mission? Uh, currently, I'm living in Sedona. I just landed there in, right before Christmas a few days. Um, I'm like in this reset mode. I was flying in Gilbert, Arizona as a student pilot, and then I hit a bump in the road, landed in Sedona, and I'm kind of just like, I thought I knew things, I was confident, and uh, I just got thrown in this whirlpool of all my belief systems from growing up and religious this and that, all just twisted up and thrown out. So I'm in this, I feel like a, like a, like a baby. <laughs> like, like I don't know anything. Yeah, yeah, really. So it's kind of funny that I saw you because I was like, oh, there's a huge line for this Elizabeth girl. And this girl's like, oh, yeah, I got activated seeing Elizabeth. You should go. If, if it's meant for you, you'll go. It's worth the $60. I was like, all right. And I called my buddy. And then, anyways, I don't want to take up too much time here. You're a baby. Okay, so, so you're, like, you just had an awakening? Like, this is all new to you? Uh, November. November. Holy. Okay. So you don't know. <laughs> Of course you've never met me. You're just starting out. All right, no, but you're here and you're, you're, you're expediting the process. So let's just tune in. Let's just see what comes up. Okay, Zach? Cool. All right, one sec. All right, <clears throat> are you scared? All right, a little bit, okay, good. I like I'm scared. <laughs> this is so much fun. All right, um, there's like a lot, so it was kind of hard to pinpoint like what exact, because you're just so new, so there was just like this huge, vast space of, 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 of information, and it's also not up to me, as I was mentioning, to give it all to you. Um, so I don't have a clear, like, this is your mission. I do want to mention that you are here for really big things. You really are. I mean, to literally wake up, to sit there, to get pulled into this, and then, and then to be chosen. Um, you're, you're about to go through a lot of experience in a very short period of time. So I want to say, just because things will get a little crazy, so I want to say 2024 to 2025 is going to be a lot, okay? The next two years, so I see you a lot of modalities. I see you, like, even joining, like, different groups in Sedona. I see you exploring with plant medicine, if you haven't already, but in Sedona with different groups. Um, I just see you're just, you're going to be a sponge over the next two years. So it's okay to not know where you're supposed to be or where you're supposed to go. And I'm not supposed to tell you where you're going to end up. That's, I'm not going to tell you that. I don't even know because your guides didn't give that to me, okay? What I want to say is you're going to have a lot of experiences. You're going to dive into everything, and, and I want to encourage that, all right? There was something else that came through with that, and it's a cosmic connection that you have, okay? Which might be kind of weird, but whatever, you're here. Um, <laughs> So I do believe that, you know, pretty much everyone in this room is a star seed, right? We're all galactic souls having a human experience. That's the definition. And I believe that most star seeds have had many different cosmic and interdimensional 
um, experiences, okay? So I'm going to tell you about one, and just know that it's not your only one, but they really want to make contact with you now to help activate you, okay? I'm just going to introduce you, and then you can do the rest of your work, uh, the work with them. All you have to do is say, I am ready to be activated in, into my highest timeline, and that's for all of you as well, okay? Um, the species that comes through here are the Octurians. Have you ever heard of the Octurians before? few times. Okay, cool. Yeah, so they're big, they're blue, they've got big eyes, but Octarians can come in all different shapes and sizes, and they're here, and they want to connect with you, and that's it. That's all I'm going to give you. Um, and I want to just mention that, you know, this is interesting because it's not a clear and defined uh, mission. <laughs> I almost wanted to say he didn't, he doesn't deserve that yet. Um, uh, no, but it's not up to me to give that to you. It's an experience, and I think that part of the message in this room is you're probably in cosmic retirement and you're here to just relax and receive and observe and like eat your popcorn and enjoy the show. And I think part of you are just on the journey and you're meant to be on the journey until you get that fuck yes. And that's who we've had up here is the cosmic retirement and then we've had the, the ones who are on the journey. And trust me, I did a little bit of everything, all the modalities until I understood, yeah, I think that this is my frequency. But even then it changes. Do not get married to one mission. Do not get married to one label. I'm a medium. Well, it's great, but if you decide to be a channeler the next year, then you're not just a medium, are you? So do not get married to the labels. Understand uh, that we are all on a journey experiencing all fractals of ourself uh, here together in unity. Thank you, Zach, so much for, for being here, showing up. Okay, I'm going to do some giveaways, and it's going to be really quick and fun. And uh, I've got the camera rolling, so I kind of want to do another fuck yes. You guys, you guys down with that? Yeah. Thank you. That, someone's a fast learner. <laughs> right over here. Right over here. All right. And then we're, we're going to do quick giveaways. Okay. One. Two, three, fuck yes! Woo! You know what? I'm gonna end all my YouTube lives with a fuck yes. That's it. Screw see you in the fifth dimension. Fuck yes, team. I'm out. How do you like them apples, Dad? I'm so sorry. I'm not. I'm not actually sorry. All right. Um. Okay, so I'm going to give away two books. I'm going to give away a notebook. And, and you know what's funny? I also got the message that I needed to give away. This is going to sound weird, but whatever. Go with it. You're here. Go with it. Um, I'm going to give away the pages of my notes from this lecture. Yeah, it was so weird. I was like writing it up and then I said, like, give it away. Give, give what away? The paper. Oh my God. So I've got two pages of this lecture. Whatever page you end up with is the message that you really need. Um, ignore the spelling mistakes. You're going to find at least 10 of them. So don't judge too hard. I'm a human, all right? OK, we're going to go with the books first. I'm sure a lot of you have the book. If you don't have the book, great, read it. If you do have the book, give it to someone that, that needs it, OK? All right. Books first. Intention for the book. All right. Evan. <laughs> no. Piercer? Pizer. So. All right. So this is Zach, right? We all know Zach. Okay. So Zach has a friend. And Zach's friend, okay, Evan, I'm going to call you out because he almost fell asleep during my lecture. Dude, 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 you're in the front row, bro. You're in the front row. There is no hiding. The Aliens? What? If... If anyone needs this book in this room, it is Evan P. 
Kaiser. Give it up. Give it up for the guy who passed out during the lecture. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow, you, you can't make this shit up, guys. Like, this is crazy. All right, all right, all right, all right. You better read that book, Evan. I will astral travel into your house. I can do that. All right, all right, all right, all right. One second. All right, next, next is another book. One more book. God, Evan. Inna, Inna, I'm not even going to, Inna, I-N-N-A, Inna, yeah, come on up, come on up. <laughs> Have you read the book? No. Nope. Oh, you haven't read the book? Amazing. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Woohoo. All right, next up, we're going to give away. I duplicated this. I don't know if you watch my Instagram stories. I've been duplicating shit like crazy. Anyway, so I, I created this custom notebook just for myself, okay, because I was done with my, my first one, and two came in the mail. And I had to double check my receipt. I'm like, I didn't pay for two, but two came. So one of you gets this. It's fresh, it's clean, it's got a little note in there for you. Um, but you're supposed to manifest your dreams, your desires. So whoever gets this really needs to write some shit down. All right. Let's go. This is so much fun. I feel like Oprah. Okay. Megan Flanagan. Megan. Come on up. Are you in need of writing some stuff down and manifesting your dream life? This is for you. You're welcome. All right, last but not least, because I know we're on a time crunch, we are going to give away the pages of the notebook. All right. First up, Brian with two N's. Maskuki? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Brian, come on up. All right, this one's all about your starseed mission. So read it. Brienne. Brienne, but it's spelled Brian. You know what? <laughs> Brienne, thank you so much. I am so bad with names. How is Brienne spelled Brian with two N? <laughs> Ask your, okay, okay, I will. Thank you, thank you so much, Brienne. You gotta love the human. You gotta love the human. Actually, I blame my parents in the front row for not teaching me English correctly. <laughs> you know, I almost failed grade three. <laughs> All right. All right. Last but not least, the second page of the notebook, and then we'll wrap up. Have a great night. I'm digging. I'm digging. All right, Melissa Grant, that's an easy name. Melissa Grant, where are you at, Melissa? Wait, wait, you guys got both pages of the notebook? Wait, all three of you are together? What? You have two pieces of the puzzle. Are you Brienne's mom? Do I blame you for the name? Brian with two N's? No, okay, that's, okay, all right. 
There you go. Yeah, thank you. I want to thank you guys so, so much. You've been amazing. Fuck yeah.